Konnichiwa, viewers. Welcome to another episode of Kyoto by Night, the second breath. Tonight we have a most auspicious occasion, wherein four gaki are gathering together with the Boneflower Mandarin, Gakusha Hiro, who is going to be administering the right to create a Wu. So the four of them and their Nushi sponsor shall be convening at the temple of the court for this ritual to take place. Uh, they're needing to be there uh, by midnight, as that would be the auspicious time for such an activity. So let's take a look at each of our gaki and see what uh, preparations they do or how they arrive at the temple. Pink Fox, um, for her part, uh, did uh, probably as well as you can expect. First and foremost, she uh, sent uh, text messages, phone calls, or whatever to all three of her future woo mates. Basically, tell them to uh, get the, stop being such lazy bastards and uh, go meet her at the temple at this precise time. Uh, but obviously, you know, without being quite so pushy or rude, because you know reasons, and because you know she likes these people. Uh, for her part, uh, she got. Uh, only her best clothes, only the most auspicious clothes, in the right colours, the right numbers, the right, um, you know, the right folders, uh, fold of um, things and everything like that. And yes, yeah, she'll also take her uber, uber awesome, uh, iDroid esque phone with her because you know. And yeah, she'll go meet uh, with all the others uh, outside the uh, temple at the appointed time. Obviously, leaving quite a bit of time for uh, people to. Uh, Arrive and for them to, uh, you know, congregate until uh, uh, Gakusha is uh, ready to receive them. Okay, which of the others wants to step forward? We're, we're going to just say Yukiko did everything Pink Fox did and quietly sat with her because she is not sure what to do here <laughs> and all that common sense. Okay, well, uh, if no one else is going to step up now, uh, Akira is going to, and he will be, um, like, had uh, uh, was was Pink Fox specific about what the reason for the gathering was? Yes. Okay. Then he would also have been. He would also be dressed in his finest outfit, um, which in his case would probably be uh, uh, like a, a, a black uh, business businessman suit, I guess. Um, and he um, will be carrying his uh, his laptop with him. Um, and uh, in a like a like the, the kind of computer bag that you like normal one slung over your shoulder, uh, and he will um, like wait outside the temple, um, look around to see if he can rec if he can see someone else. And as soon as oh, sorry, carry on. Man. No, I was uh, waiting. I was going to I was going to say like uh, Grant. Uh, do his part, then I'll do oh, mine. Oh, sorry. Brent? Audio problems again? Already? <laughs> <laughs> uh, nope. Yep. All right, so uh, Tomoyoshi oh. is uh, getting himself together. And uh, <laughs> uh, because he's definitely going to want to make sure he puts a good impression on his Mandarin and perhaps pick up a little bit of hints for Dharmic understanding. Um, so when he relogs in, we can see if there's anything extra. Otherwise, we'll continue with the four of you assembled there. So Pink Fox, what was the pep talk or prep talk that you were uh, wanting to 
basically, basically Pink Fox was just going to uh, look over Akira once he arrived, you know, smile and wave and everything like that, just to check sh to make sure that she they've got at least uh, something of the color blue upon their person because you know blue is the color of their direction. He uh, his tie is blue. Ah, uh, good on you, good sir. Yeah, she sees that and she kind of like breathes a subtle sigh of relief, even though she's not quite. Uh, you know, she's not she's not quite like solidly put her belief system in the whole uh, thing of colours. She does feel that uh, perhaps you know, at least for the uh, in the eyes of the uh, House Bishamon and the elders, that uh, you know they should have uh, some degree of colours corresponding to their direction upon them. Uh, isn't there also something about numbers being important? Yes. Uh, what is our number? <laughs> I uh, believe it was three. I could be I could be mistaken. Let me let me jump double check. I tried to find it in the book, but I couldn't find it. Um, um, can you hear me now? Yes, we yes. can hear you now. So what? Okay. Um, what uh, preparations do you do? Well, uh, since this is an auspicious event. Tome was actually going to procure a uh, uh, oh. is Komodo a unisex thing or do they also I'm trying to remember it's not something that comes up very often uh, yes you males wear kimonos as well alright he'll get a uh, uh nice kimono in the color of his direction and add some sort of uh, number uh, to, to represent his uh, dharma. I'm trying to remember uh, it exact, I think it's eight. Uh, your dharma is four and black. Okay. Dharma, black? Okay. So a black, uh, oh, the direction is black? Uh, your direction is white and nine. Okay, so, uh, hmm, so four, a uh, black kimono with four, uh, white stars and the white belt with nine black stripes. Okay. All right. And you guys then uh, getting your preparations, colorizing and bedazzling yourselves in auspicious manners have assembled at the temple. He has colored his. Uh, Akira has colored his. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm going to assume that there are eight buttons in his shirt, and he's colored them blue. Okay. There you go. Cool. And the uh, yeah. Once you guys have gathered there together, and are ready. The uh, Mandarin yeah. is uh, ready for you guys in uh, one of the meditation chambers. And as soon as, um, well, I'm presuming that they'll uh, request one of the uh, mortal retainers uh, to see Gakusha, and you know they'll wait until they're shown in. Uh, you know, Big Fox all for her part. Um, you know, sit down at the uh, appointed um, place and wait for everyone else to sit down before she'll, uh, you know, kind of pipe up. Akira uh, will just enter and sit down as well. Uh, san we have come here with the intent of requesting that you aid us in 
finding this spirit which we have found common goals, common cause with, if you would assist us. At this time of the wheel, it is unfortunate that not all limbs can be present, but it is a necessity. I see before me four gaki of varying focus. For true auspicious harmony, you should find a fifth that is very different from each of you. But in these times, it is important that we respect the family bond of a Wu for unified focus, unified path of support. I will be most honored to help you with it, make this as auspicious as possible of a ritual. She will, uh, he will gesture, and uh, there are <coughs> servants that you guys can't see at the moment who will uh, activate the braziers in the room and start filling the room with steam. And uh, one of, uh, one of the uh, doors slides open a little bit, and Gakusha Hero goes and brings in a uh, bucket with spun uh, actual sponge sponges, not modern sponges, but actual sponge from the sea sponges, and says, the ritual cleansing of each other is important for spiritual purity and symbolizes the support you will be giving each other in walking unerringly along the road back. And takes a step back from the, uh, the bucket of, of water with the sponge. And uh, Pink Fox will uh, actually bow as Gakusha steps away. And... Um, step forward towards the uh, bucket with uh, one of the sponges in. <clears throat> now she'll pick it up and uh, slight look towards uh, Akira, first of all. And Akira will, will also bow to uh, uh, Kakusha uh, Respectfully, and then he will approach uh, Pink Fox. Pink Fox uh, gently, um, well, she's soaked the uh, sponge with uh, water, drained out um, most uh, most of it, but you know, retained enough moisture so that she can, yeah. you know, sort of like uh, wipe, yeah. do as the ritual demands, and like uh, clean uh, his uh, his face, the ritual cleansing, as it were. And he takes off his glasses to to do that. Okay, y'all roboted there for me for a minute. Were y'all talking to me? Oh, okay. No, no, we're just going through the motions of the whole ritual cleansing thing. You know, ah, okay. oh, goody, okay. Yeah, pretty much. Well, yay for doing that. Um, and the uh, pink fox, no pink fox. The Akira will uh, pick up another sponge, uh, and he will uh, like also gently wash uh, her face. Probably get uh, uh, makes a little bit of a makeup run, but that's the whole point of the whole thing. It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, Pink Fox will then like gesture for uh, Yoshi to uh, approach, so she can uh, 
give him the ritual cleansing with the sponge. Of course, like dipping it in and squeezing it out and mm. what have you. Mm-hmm. Tommy will uh, come forward. Is uh, any uh, <sighs> dirt that may have obscured his paleness is now wiped away. <laughs> And Pink Fox will do the same thing for uh, uh, for Ishida. Jessica, I heard you. I was clicking on mute. Uh, she'll, she'll return the process. She'll not really did much else to do but wash each other there. After you guys have finished cleansing yourselves, Gakusha will gesture for you to take position uh, around one of the braziers that has incense smoke filling the uh, room with steam. And then she, he takes from a pouch and sprinkles a mixture of white and green jade along the heads of each of you. As you guys are sitting there by the brazier, the Wu is the center of the strength, the reciprocity of you supporting each other and providing strength. <coughs> what is the Nushi spirit that you have chosen to be a go-between and a bond for your Wu. Pink Fox will take out her um, uber, uber, uber futuristic uh, phone. Naturally, uh, switch it onto the uh, process, where she'll actually give the Balong Seven the call. This is the spirit that we have contacted and has requested our assistance and which we are willing to bind ourselves to. Presumably, Falong 7 will uh, answer and appear. I see. Very well. A Nushi spirit helps provide drive and common goal for the Wu. Your Wu, I believe then, has... That wasn't really good. But your Wu has a focus wherein you will be able to support this Nushi spirit with strengthening technology and it will provide you with support and guidance amongst the mortals of Kyoto. Your Wu is of the east direction and the west as you are bridging the gap between the mortal and the spiritual through the changing times that you are facing. And he'll take out some silk strips and put your hands together over top of the brazier and start wrapping your hands with the silk. And at this time, I need each of you to swear fealty to each other and to your Nushi. You are my new family. I died once, not knowing whom gave me birth. 
You are each my brothers. You are each my sister. I pray that the support that I give you will be enough. And I pray that the support that you give me in return, I will appreciate. Through, through our, through our Nushi, may they bless us with their knowledge, guide us, and help us to learn and grow. You can uh, make the oath however you, you would like. Akira uh, looks down first and then he looks up at the gathered Wu and uh, he says, When I died, my life had no meaning. I went, I went to the hells not knowing my place, not knowing my potential not knowing what I could be to the world and to others. The second breath brought me back and you will be my family, he says. I will help you in whatever way that I can and together we shall walk along our respective paths back to the beginning. I swear now, he says, that I will always stand by you, by you, by you three. I swear that I will always honor our Nushi and that each of you can expect me to die again for you if you need it. Oh, see what was that? Was that last last part over the top? No, nope. that was perfect. Oh, that was good. Uh, and then he's through. Better than mine. What? Um, yeah, Yoshi's not one for overflowery words, so he'll just say simply, "In this life, I shall support you, and this." Uh, our patron spirit. I shall help you through your tribulations and hope not to be a burden to you. The whole time while you guys are reciting your commitments, Gakusha is just walking in a clockwise circle behind you, around you, and chanting the ritual words for the bonding. You guys will feel, you guys will feel the connection between the five of you, the four Gaki and the one spirit, as you guys' ritual culminates with there being a bonds. You guys will have a connection, a spiritual, mystical connection. Um, it's not strong enough to interfere, but more or less just strong enough to be able to can keep stability. You guys know that you can rely upon each other, and your Nushi will provide you guys with the gifts that she bestows upon those who are over. I thought Jess already said hers. No. Oh. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I was getting on to a uh, little boy. I'm sorry, I lost track. I thought Jess had said hers. Okay, you can say your vows too. Sorry about that. But that's why Ishida. I just typed it in the chat while I was uh, yelling at him. You can say it then. Okay. Uh, as the ritual continues, you, Yukika's part will be, I was betrayed and killed by one who should never betray those of their blood, and I swear as my new brothers and sister... I will never turn upon you in a manner like that. Hers is simple, short, and sweet. And apologies for that. I'm sorry. It is I lost okay. Track between the people. <laughs> Sweetheart, there's uh, a lot of us in this scene with a lot of similarities. 
So once the, the bonding occurs and you guys can feel that connection with each other, you will always feel that connection with each other and you will also therefore know if something inauspicious happens to one of the others. You guys will know when one of you has met the little death, one of you will, you guys will definitely know if any of you are permanently cast out of the great cycle. And your new she will be able to alert you if there's other complications with others that are happening. You guys have extra strength, extra support, and extra protection. So at the end of the ritual, Kakusha will again say, again, as I said, most auspicious combinations is when there are multiple strengths linked together with the number five. As there are four of you, if you find one that will similarly complement with new skills and new outlooks, I will be honored to be able to add them to your woo. But the four of you are now strengthened for support and she'll be able to help each other out in the nights to come. For we are still the cusp of the turning of the wheel and the sixth age will bring disastrous times indeed. I am here for any guidance that you may need or seek, any rituals that you may need. And as Kyuji of the court, if you or your Wu has any official grievances with those outside of your Wu in the city, I am the mediator for such affairs. Should you require anything to go through professional channels, and Pink Fox will uh, naturally bow to Gakusha, acknowledging their uh, offer and their uh, authority in uh, such a position. Thank you, Gakusha san. Akira will do the same. So will you, if you. Tomoyoshi, I would like to speak with you privately a moment before you leave this evening. Of course. We'll wait outside. Akira gives uh, Yoshi a concerned look, not not uh, the kind of uh, backstabbing look that a Camarilla kindred would give, but like a, an, a genuine concern, but he says nothing and he will uh, follow... Ping pong, so he, other, be, otherwise he will leave. Yeah. Be, be, before leaving, Yukiko actually is going to politely bow to her elders. She is leaving behind before turning on Hill and following Pink Fox. Mm. Tomoyoshi, I am. Um, I believe it is auspicious that you have found a family to provide you with support as I know that you have had many obstacles in your dharmic path over the previous months. Mm. I am told that you have resolved the concerns with the rampant chime that you had reported earlier. Is that correct? Yes. And how did that resolution o occur? Through the uh, support of the uh, Wu you just made. I see. So no Chime has been brought in for civilizing. What was the outcome of that encounter? Hmm. He is... Uh, he is in a... Uh, Hmm. I, he is under the uh, watch of Pink Fox. To be honest, I don't know exactly what she intended to do with him, but uh, I trusted her to take care of the matter. If she had anything else, she'd bring it to me. Uh, but uh, I've been focusing on figuring out this uh, broken mirror. I don't wish it to get any bother. 
uh, any worse. Understandable. It is good that you are putting the safety of the city and the spiritual safety of your Wu ahead of personal concerns. Please let me know if there is anything that needs to be done in supporting your Wu for proper conduct. Hmm. I will, my ancestor. Very well. Remember, Tomo, a bad wife spills a hundred years of bad harvest. And he will do a slight bow politely and uh, <laughs> will uh, head out of the room. Yay, you guys are a woo. Do you do anything to celebrate, or...? Yukiko's gonna go hit up a sake bar. Um, before they leave, I, uh, will bow and offer to, uh, read the portents of our newly formed woo, if they wish. Sure. Sure. Okay. Mm. Is this uh, a discipline or is it like the pole portents? Uh, Horus, what do you call it? The skill? Potent or portent? Oh, oh, right, right. Yeah. Okay. So what, what method are you uh, going to be using to try to uh, ascertain? Um, I'm going to go into the uh, back of my car and get out a few uh, ritual bones. Okay. Reading of the bones. Yes. Now, um, I can't remember. I, I know what my potence is, but what do I use along with it? Uh, you would be rolling uh, perception and portents. The difficulty is going to be your willpower. Oh, dear. <laughs> Double check this. Yeah, it's still sick. So let's see how I do. Uh, the bones are cloudy. <laughs> um, let me just take a look here because of what you're rolling this on. Um, zero and white, so east is eight. Uh, yeah, that doesn't help you any. So you've got one success? No. Oh, no, your, your willpower is higher than that. I was going to say, we didn't, uh, we didn't take it up to seven, so it's just a six. Okay. Um, yeah, so you can... I will let you um, relay what future you see with uh, for them. Hmm. What what uh, what future do you want to tell your Wu is in store for them? Or are you just going to say, hmm, the magic eight ball says, <laughs> try again later. <laughs> um, the bones do not speak loudly of the future. But the future seems we at least will help each other. But I cannot see any specifics. Uh, help. Well, that's uh, not too bad. Hmm. Well, now that we're together. Shall we go out somewhere for a little bit? Mm. And we could probably talk about um, this thing. Yes. 
Um. I'm free for a couple hours. I can go wherever you want to go, Pink. Hey. And she'll probably just like saunter off, uh, probably with uh, trying to get everyone to come with her in tow. She'll drag them uh, by the by the ha by the hand if necessary, you know. All right. Don't right. stop until I walk in. Da -da. Take care, won't fall over without coming. Uh, Tomei will at least make the uh, slight suggestion. If we're going to talk to each other, make sure it's not too loud. <laughs> oh. oh well. I'll try. And yeah, they'll probably go to I don't know some. I mean, Ishida said we were going to go to a sake bar, so it could go there. And yes, probably have a couple of a uh, couple of rounds of sake to celebrate and to you know honor <laughs> Falun Seven. Okay. Uh, okay. First thing first. Uh, I should let you know that Falun Seven really wants us all to uh, advance the. Uh, development and use of mobile communication technology, you know, phones, so, you know, get your upgrade your phone to the newest uh, one, like this one here, which I've got awesome, um, and yeah, uh, from there, there's a couple of things that I kind of need to let you guys know, you know, I've already told um, Yoshi about this, but, um, well, have you ever noticed, like, there are some inst there have been some instances in the past where you know things have happened in Kyoto which were a little bit weird but they never were resolved or you know something happened and it seems like someone might have uh, you know tinkered with it think you're mm. not yeah uh, there's been some strange things going on, but I mean, this whole I don't I'm not I don't I'm not sure what's normal strange and what's strange strange. Uh, what have you um, discovered lately? Or what's brought got your attention? Okay. Oh, see, you got me there. But he will explain a few uh, things. Birds flying strangely. Uh, Cats doing weird stuff, whatever. He'll find something. Oh, see, is that a uh, feasible story or is, it is he just bullshitting with me? Um, um, it it feasible, could just I mean, be, uh, could be things that uh, he found interesting. I mean, if you want to make uh, wits enigmas to see if that's got anything to do with anything that you're. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> Three successes. Yeah, I'm going to be making a roll for that also. Dice, please do not fuck me over this time. <laughs> please do. Fudge, fudge, fudge. Shush over there. <laughs> the, the dice are not uh, happy with me today, no. but they are not too un but they are not unkind. I do not have an enigma on my character sheet. Then you would not be able to try to suss this out. Yeah, the, like, like it's not listed I guess, at all. Here's an irony. I'm, I'm probably the least. In Pink Fox is probably the least intelligent character here, and she gets three successes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, uh, it does not have anything to do with what you're talking about, but those are curious, inauspicious activities that might. Be worth noting. Okay. Yeah, Pink Fox will probably like to store that in the uh, memories. Um, wasn't exactly where I was insinuating. Um, it's like this. <sighs> there. Well, uh, Yoshi, you know that uh, museum that you told me about. You know where I first met you. Yes. 
you remember the uh, police captain? The one that we <laughs> talked about? Yes. Yeah. Well, it's like this. I kind of heard of this guy, um, but I heard, I started to notice that his name cropped up whenever there was, like, things that were happening, uh, which, you know, may have been a result of a scarlet screen. And I started thinking to myself, you know, we've got to find out more about him. So, I, you know, I did a bit digging around, and, well, here's what I know. The guy's name is Captain Wakahisa. You know, he's a police captain that's mostly active around downtown, central, and Hiroshima districts. He's affiliated with the JIC, so, you know, he's got uh, good um, connections there. And by his reputation, he seems to uh, revolve himself around really unusual cases. You know, even goes so far as to force himself into those cases. Um, you know, even ones that he really shouldn't have any have any business being in. But you know, despite that, however, he's never had a bad mark in his record. You know, there's been no brutality or corruption. And as far as his family goes. He's kind of estranged from his extended family. He's not married. Well, at least I think he's not married. She kind of looks over towards Yoshi at that point. Mm. And but the one thing that me and Yoshi have been able to confirm is that he's obviously a devout Buddhist. You know, he's been involved in several charities and uh, festivals. And we know that he goes to the Soh the Sohansa Miyominji temple, basically where we just left. Um, mm -hmm. But here's the weird thing. If yeah. I wouldn't, if I didn't say any better, I'd say that he's either a puppet of, um, you know, a scarlet screen, you know, one of the elders, or he's a hunter. I'd say if he were a hunter, he'd probably be trying to push these investigations harder. Mm. Yeah, that's the kind of thing, that's the weird thing. But if he's a puppet of an, of an elder, who, what purpose does he have? Probably to keep, uh, uh, those uh, accidents that happen uh, day by day uh, in our, our lives from coming to the public eye. Mm. And the authority's eye, as it were. Mm. Obviously has to have his limits though, doesn't he? True. I have to say that's probably why um, Oh, that brings up another thing. Uh, I uh, assume since we are now all a family, it's okay to discuss the uh, individual we found with uh, Kira? Yeah, I think so too. Okay. Right. Anyway, Kira is. Yeah. The. Uh, the. Uh, Elder has at least been informed that uh, uh, the Chime problem is uh, resolved, but they're kind of wondering why he's not been given over for uh, re-education. And uh, so, uh, Pink Fox, I was thinking maybe you have an idea. Hmm. 
I was thinking maybe... Well... I only looked after him for, like, a single night. You know? He was a mm. bit of a handful. His Poe got the better of him. Um, but, you know... Uh, I do think that maybe... Maybe Algawasan would be the one to, you know, look after him because it seems like he's he's using the Po to give himself some semblance of control. But you know, he doesn't have complete control over it. Mm. Um, of course, he's not been truly educated in you know the fivefold way, so. Who knows? Um, maybe, maybe if, when he's, if he gets the proper education, then you know we can possibly, you know, he would possibly get the chance to choose which uh, path that he would want to walk. In the road. Right. The big uh, issue I feel is they won't be. Uh, Happy till they know he had to, he would had to be put down because he was uh, basically a, a uncontrollable uh, Quajin, or he's brought in for education. So we have to find out how we can it how he's connected to the uh, broken mirror. I don't know. I mean, there's only so much that I can I could have, could have found from my own use of obligation. Mm. So I think we need someone who's a lot more knowledgeable, which is where I think either Kakushu or Ogawasam would be able to, you know, um, help in this regards. Right. Because I mean, I've tried to think about all the things that I learned from, you know. My use of obligation. And I tried to, but I don't know anything about, you know, the other world stuff. I mean, it's things like this. Basically, basically, he has kind of a spirit bond to this, uh, uh, to this uh, room, and his he has an obsession over it. You know, his gu his poke guides him towards it. And if nothing else, the room itself has some really bad feng shui about it. Yes. It's been a puzzle you know, I just, I, you know, I had this kind of thought. Do you think it's possible that this room, and considering what, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, Masaru had told me about, do you think it might be a gateway? into a Yami realm? Hmm. The, uh, the uh, spirit room that we've that I've encountered? Or the yeah. actual room? The room because that's in the picture that, you know, he was trying to get, you know, at the, the station. The of the words Yami realm, Akira's eyes widen in horror, but he doesn't say anything. This is the thing. The uh, Yami uh, uh, realm. Uh, I don't. Mm -hmm. One second. I don't know if the uh, Yami realm can be uh, reached in the mortal way, but in the spectral. Um, room that uh, has been moved, I can see that as a possibility. Enigmas it, or occult, would I need to roll? Um, occult. It'd be no. difficulty yeah. 8. Intelligence occult, difficulty 8. Okay, dokes. This is going to be interesting. Bare minimum one success. Okay. 
um, broken mirrors, uh, if they are stable, actually are uh, become physical portals to Yomi Wan. So mortals can accidentally cross over sometimes, and uh, sometimes things can crawl th out as well. And then Pink Fox will just kind of like say that in perhaps a perhaps not quite as clear terms, but you know, still quite. Uh, yeah, it's, thankfully it's not a stable uh, air, area or space yet. It's yeah, still but something's coming out of it, isn't it? Impossible. And there's got to be some reason why that uh, Masaru is so obsessed with it, with that room. But here's the thing. Uh, because of what is guiding him to destroy these paintings, it makes me very hesitant to uh, believe he's uh, he's in any way harming that room. So, what are we going to do? Hmm. You're the only one here that knows anything about the spirit worlds. Well, I have the instinct, as it were. Hmm and it's probably a good first step, to keep him from uh, destroying any more of the paintings and also a good to uh, keep them out of the hands of the mortals. I think it would be good for us to try and collect any that are free on the market as it, at this moment we can. I mean, well, let me put it this way. This, uh, this mobile cost a lot of money, and we're going to have to keep everything, in order to appease uh, Falong 7, we're going to have to keep every electronic item that we have, you know, cutting edge, state of the art. It's going to cut into our resources a little bit, but, you know, I'm sure that we can, with what we have, find other ways to acquire them. Akira will uh, will hold up his own uh, phone. It's a it's a it's a Galaxy S7. No, it's seven the five. I don't know why I said seven. Uh, <laughs> um, and he uh, he said, well, at least I can probably be of some assistance there. I mean, I can I can scour the the internet, see if if, if I am certain that if like whatever is out there, someone has someone is talking about it, and I will do my best to find out who and where. We can take it from there. And uh, it's uh, if I fall back on my former skills, I could try and uh, if we can. Uh, Start a little bit of startup money. I can see if I can help us uh, start up a fund to uh, help uh, lessen the burden of uh, updating our uh, uh, electronics with some sort of uh, central bank account, as it were. You mean basically just start up a business and try to get live off the investment, mm. live off the interest, even. Yeah, basically, uh, not so much a business, but maybe a uh, uh, stock exchange or uh, mm. uh, investments, well, that type of thing. Well, unfortunately, I don't know about you guys, but my knowledge of uh, you know finance and things like that is uh, pretty slim. I mean, I have uh, trouble uh, <laughs> balancing a checkbook, but it's something that I have been looking into because, you know, dharmically speaking, um, I can only do so much in you know what I currently do, and the current experiences that I can have. But you know, in order to get the bigger experiences, the better ones, I need to take some extreme risks where I need, you know, a lot of money, which is where I think I should probably start looking into, like, maybe business classes or something like that, maybe. Um, hey, Jacob, hon, 
Uh, the kid's dad just came and dropped off money. I'm going to have to take him to go and get food. Yeah, I will no be problem. back later. No worries, Jess. Okay. No worries. I'll just decide. Be good. Just big. Uh, no promises. J just pretend Yukiko's under the table or something. <laughs> well, whatever your fantasies are. Yeah, well, Pink Fox has her legs closed, so... <laughs> See you later, Jess. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Bye. Bye. Um... Akira will, uh, will, will, will uh, look up and say, "Well, I have some. Uh, uh, I, I read. I have some uh, theoretical knowledge uh, of financial matters, and I can probably do a little bit more. But um, if we want to get a stable uh, source of income, we need to." We have two choices. We can either... S I have some resources, uh, a little bit anyway, we can use to uh, set up uh, some starting business, um, a cafe, so, uh, uh, a, 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 a cyber cafe, I don't know, something like that. Or we could go the investment route, but that would require more skill and patience and more uh, care. Yeah, this is definitely something we're going to have to talk about. I do have kind of an idea of my own, but I need to think on it more. There's also a lot of other things, immediate concerns that we have. Like, um, well, I told uh, Yoshi about this the other day, but I got invited to the uh, Onisaken New Year party for the uh, Kyoto Police and, you know, Menichi uh, Broadcasting uh, Company. You know that they got the exclusive footage for that for that whole report. So, and you know, I had a I have a friend there, and they kind of wanted me there to be my plus one. And I know that Captain Makahi so is going to be there. If more than anything else, this is kind of maybe an opportunity to get some police contacts. I'm pretty sure we could use that we could probably use the connections that we could potentially get there to better um, Phalanx 7's cause. You know, maybe learn a bit, little bit more about Captain Wakahisa. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The only problem is... I don't know. It seems a little... weird. It's kind of like I told Yoshi the other day. There's always free cheese in a mouse trap. He chuckles. Yeah, once. The problem is I don't, I don't see how this. Uh, I know there's cheese in a mouse trap, but I don't see this being. Uh, good, a uh, good bait for the mice, as it were, or no, a good device to catch the, uh, the mouse. Well, it's like this. It's a New Year's party. I mean, I've. Oh, see, does Pink Fox know where the actual venue is right now? Uh no, I don't think uh, she's been given the venue. She's just been uh, told that hey. I would like you to be my date. Oh, yes, of course. Well, that's the problem. I don't know where the venue is going to be, so it may as well be, you know, uh, in the middle of a police station, you know? I was going to say, could you find out? Because, uh, I don't know, maybe you were uh, think of some pretext to ask your... Uh, uh, the person taking you as a class one as to where it's going. Mm. I suppose I could. Uh, yeah, in fact, Pink Fox will probably take her phone out. I'm assuming common sense will uh, dictate that I've got to word this uh, adequately, innocently enough. Yeah. yeah, you'd be able to. Yeah, basically, just going to send a, a text message to Chase asking uh, where's the. Uh, you know, Onisakan party going to be uh, 
uh, hosted at and is there any fancy dress or any dress requirements or things like that obviously mm -hmm. with like a very obviously with a very cute emo emoji at the end of it <laughs> um okay give me one quick second here The uh, so she lets you know dress code is uh, semi-formal party. I mean, there's probably going to be some people that are really dressed fancy, but there's not necessarily going to be. Uh, you know, you don't have to necessarily dress to the nines if you don't want to. Um, and okay. I'm just looking here at and it is going to be at the uh, uh, Royanji Temple. Um, it's got a famous Zen garden. Um, so it'll be outdoors uh, with lanterns and other uh, uh, presuming, presuming other uh, situ things set up for entertainment. Hmm. Um, Do I know that place? Um, it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not a known location for um, oh, court right. members. I'm sorry. sorry, I thought that. Uh, I thought that. I thought that had actually been there before, but yeah, I was uh, thinking something else. Jacob. Yes. The, uh, you know how Kyoto is sort of uh, divided between the Kuijin and the Hyangokai. Uh, where would the would this temple fall uh, fall in with our within our boundary or theirs? Yeah, it would still be within um, within our boundaries because um, okay. it's still in Kyoto proper. It's uh, it's the smaller villages outside of the proper city, the suburbs. Of the prefecture that would fall under Hengayokai uh, oversight. Because oh, I uh, oh okay so you, I know in the uh, oh, preset that uh, we have to be a bit more careful because some of the stuff in the middle uh, was owned by Hengayokai. Yeah. Okay. I'm just so, looking up. Uh, I'm just looking up on Wikipedia. It's absolutely beautiful. Good choice. Yeah, it is, eh? <laughs> Then uh, he'll, uh, Pink Fox will definitely like send a return message to Chase, basically saying thank you. Hoax kiss bye. Winky face. <laughs> P.S. Still sore from uh, Christmas Eve. Big <laughs> anyway, um, so. A map of the temple, probably a good thing, and uh, yeah, it's uh, um, leave up to Jason and uh, 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 Mark. Yeah, yeah, I think. Map of the temple would be nice. Um, uh, you know, um, anything that we might possibly know about this place from you know our perspective. Um. Cold ball. Yeah, you could do intelligence occult. It would be standard difficulty. Uh, nothing on my end. Alright, did you say intelligence, occult? Yeah. Uh, well, since I exited out that, I guess it's not uh, important, but two successes. Okay. Um... 
some of the chi lines do pass through there. There is not a, a dragon nest or a node or anything like that. Um, but it is uh, it, it is a good spot for um, yang spirits. And uh, it is not uh, overseen or under the control or care of uh, any of the uh, gaki of the court. Okay. Um, have I heard any uh, whispers about the uh, what the uh, what, what do they call them uh, the Jade Empire or uh, um, so for you wouldn't you wouldn't have anything at this time though given the nature and the fact that it's a temple, the wall is probably thin, so it would also be an easier place to interact with uh, with uh, any ghosts or ancestors. Right. And that, the wall would be and that probably means if uh, we, we enter a spot where the uh, 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 ghosts don't want uh, gawk or any... Uh, other supernaturals will be easier for to mess with us. I suppose, yeah. If that's uh, if that's a concern. Yeah. Well, it's a good place for Yang spirits, though. Right. Well, that's allayed a lot of my concerns, but um. Still would like a little bit of backup, maybe, if not in only act electronic form. Mm. Uh, given it's a temple, I don't know about the uh, surveillance, but uh, mm. in fact, mm -hmm. that actually reminds me this idea that I had. You know, you know how some. How the you know I mean you probably heard all stories about you know the NSA you know spying on people through their mobiles. Mm -hmm. Well, I was thinking is, what if we had some kind of like mini like an iPad that could um, you know listen in on individual phones you know one at a time, and it would track where you know people go and what they say. You know, you know, tracks them by voice recognition. You know, the, you know those voice recognition things that you can get in your computer. Mm -hmm. What if we had that? But it, you know, it fight it tracks people by their voice when they're using their phone, or while, when it's switched on, or whenever they use the phone, or whatever. Or it just tracks them by their voice. You know, I'm pretty sure that Phalanx Seven would love something like that. Mm, possibly. Although, um, I don't know. Wait. I was going to say, okay, you first. I was going to say, I don't know much about computers, but you guys do. In order to get this thing started, we need an iPad. We need some kind of access to, like, the mobile phone company or some details for mobiles. When I, tell you what, when I got this phone here... Um, you know, the guy behind the counter was really, really nice, and, you know, I think he was a bit sweet on me. Still got his number. <laughs> Akira chuckles. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if they'll have anything there, but, you know, we can always, like, go there to search one night and try. I mean, I'm pretty sure I could keep him distracted for a little while. Mm, maybe, but this definitely seems like, uh, have you run this idea past the our uh, patron, as it were. I don't know. That's I, mean, I kind of I didn't know if it was like really feasible or not. I mean, do you do you guys think it could ha it could work if we had all the right stuff? Uh, it will take uh, it'll take equipment and uh, work. But here's the thing: before we put in all uh, this effort, it sounds like uh, I don't know what her outlook on this type of thing will be. I don't see her having a problem helping us out once in a while to uh, uh, maybe uh, 
spy on a person or two, but uh, given the uh, he really wants uh, um, uh, the technology of mobile phones and uh, information uh, technology to uh, uh, pass uh, with a greater accuracy. I don't know whether she would want it to uh, be uh, tainted in a uh, use as a uh, listening and spying tool. Well, I mean, we could always approach it with the idea that we'd only use it to further economy. I, mean, I had the idea that may well, we. My initial idea when uh, I met Falong Seven and I promised that I would help their cause is I thought about maybe like, trying to find out the different mobile phone companies in Kyoto or like, some sort of business or anything you know that develops like mobile phone technology mm -hmm. who knows maybe maybe if she you know she's cool with the idea or she's like really has some like really stingent ideas about it maybe no stingent probably worse type, worse name for it maybe she has some very specific ideas about how it should be used we can follow that Mm. And we don't know unless we ask. True. Although the uh, that that's the thing. The, the uh, mobile industry has become uh, so interconnected with any other communication and technology industry. Uh, I don't know if we'll, uh, um, by tapping into this uh, one thing, we'll probably be tapping into several different uh, things, like emails, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, hmm. I mean, if the if there are new, she says it's okay. Yes, that's another thing. Does um. Uh, when you think of mobile technology, given the uh, how it began as a uh, being able to hear another person's voice, uh, is that where she's primarily focused, or is it anything that? Uh, you can ask her yourself. I mean, you are part of the new she. Right. Hmm. That's the thing. Uh, do we have to call her, or do we have? Uh, I'm asking Jacob now. Do we have like a sixth sense to get in contact her, or do we have to actually summon her? Uh, you the would way? have to uh, you would have to summon her like with your um, with the phone like Pink Fox has done, and but the thing is is between using the uh, focus of the phone or uh, the fact that she's your new she, you don't have to worry about hunt rolls to speak to the spirit or anything like that. So it's so if I want to talk to the Nushi, I just um, what? Oh, that's another thing. Do I have to worry about uh? Do do we have to spend a piece a uh, point of Yang to uh, be able to perceive her? Uh, to perceive her, you will have to activate life sight. Yes. Okay. And that's why I but, uh, take the easy route and just use the phone. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So. Okay. Um. Yes. Maybe we should get together as a group sometime in a uh, more appropriate setting and uh, have, as it were, a conference call. Yeah. Well, in the meantime, shall we have another round? Mm. Oh, um, given we are all family now, and uh, our, uh, I guess, would you say our own problems are now, if not uh, everyone else's problems, at least everyone else's uh, concern? Of course. Okay. Thank you, or not? And we are we are one. He says, if one limb suffers, the whole body does. Right. So, uh, 
what is everyone else's goals and uh, dreams in life, as it were, past our, of course, uh, enlightenment and dharmic understanding. Well, you got me in there. In all honesty, I'd like to own my own business. You know, I mean, you've, um, well, I know that uh, Akira's been to the club. I'd like to one day be able to own that place and, I don't know, maybe expand on it. Um, you know, that's also for dharmic reasons as well. Maybe. Yeah. I'm not really sure. You know, I kind of need to know a lot about how to run a business and things like that. Well, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a uh, teacher by trade, but I can try and teach you the basics of uh, finance. So can I, the curiousness. Hey. <laughs> but uh, if you need any help with... Co uh, I know there is... Uh, if you really get into a uh, big business, there's some... Uh, you have to be aware of corporate laws and such. I don't know if I can help you with that, though. No, uh, it's perfectly fine. I'm sure I'll learn it up eventually. Besides... <sighs> Anywho. Another Although, round? Uh, Although, there was one... Uh, another uh, round it is, then. Yeah. And Pickfox <laughs> goes off to get to another round of drinks for everyone. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Because, you know, impatience. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Tomei will say, oh, I did meet a uh, one Quajin once, and uh, we, uh, he seemed to come from a uh, lawyer's office, so maybe. Yeah, um, I think we'll come, I think we've probably been on long enough with this scene. Um, We'll probably say that uh, everyone has their last uh, drinks. Yeah. Probably discusses a little bit more about uh, the whole business ideas and dharmic uh, directions and whatnot before yeah, uh, exactly. you visit with me. Okay. All right. Well, excellent. We've got our group set up. We have a good uh, woo organized. You guys kind of know more about what your plans and what your paths and expectations are. So, um, good on you guys. Thanks for watching, and we will see you another time these nights in Kyoto.